Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Super excited to show off what we've got going with the new DBP 9.0 front end. Um, so, wanted to give you kind of a full walkthrough of different things um, that have changed and different procedures for sign up, shopping, etc. It kind of starts with the home page. You'll see here right off the bat we've got uh, please enter your delivery address. Um, that's present throughout the site. Um, if you haven't entered a delivery, a delivery address yet, we're heavily integrated with Google now, so we do address checking. So when you start typing in your address, it's going to do a check and let you choose a match, etc. Um, our homepage has changed quite a bit. Um, the site in general is really built for mobile first and then desktops, um, which is a, a pretty cool experience. But you'll see as you scroll down the homepage, you've got your typical kind of uh, slideshow action uh, with different value statements and calls to action. That's a section you can choose to have or not have on your install. Um, we have get, start getting into more of our mission type stuff. For your install or your company, this may be a different section that's, that's you know, featuring a uh, producer of the month or something like that. All these sections are, are interswappable and we can put whatever information we want to in them. But you'll see as, as the customer starts um, kind of investigating your company and trying to learn more about what you guys offer, there's different calls to action. So as they scroll down, we're presenting your categories in more of a visual fashion where you've uploaded a category icon for each of your categories, a call out to shop all products. Then you get into dynamic product as far as what you have on feature right now. Maybe some of those items are on sale. You could view all and go straight into the entire category of featured products. Um, again, as you start scrolling down, you're going to see new products. So that would be your new products category that you guys have set up. And then as you go down, you get into sale items or specials and then a shop all products call out. And then we've kind of designated a section to customer testimonials. We found that that's really important uh, for a lot of the, the companies we've got are, that are uh, you know, making use of those. You see a, an increase in their average order totals and their sign up rates. And then as you get beyond that, maybe a reinforcement statement about your offer. Um, again, all these sections are, are kind of, do you need it, do you not need it? What kind of info do you want to put in there? Um, and then if you've got different companies that that use your products that you want to highlight, obviously a section kind of um, highlighting what what those uh, particular companies are, whether it's the logo or a quick bio or a picture of the family, etc. And then as you start getting towards the bottom of the page, you've got more of a call out of you know first time registration, first time order special, coupon code, that type of thing, and then more of your your footer navigation. We've got uh, newsletter sign up built into all of our 9.0 installs. So people can sign up for just the, uh, the newsletter by itself. Um, just kind of scrolling back up to the top here, we'll take a look at some of the other things you can do. Um, if we go directly to sign in, for example, um, you'll see we've, we've separated this page into create account, log in. If you've forgotten your username or password, you'll see that that, that happens on the same exact page you're sitting on versus previously you'd gone to a new page. Um, creating an account is now a three-step process and you can get there either just by going directly to register or eventually you'll be prompted to register as you're shopping. Um, so in essence we're collecting delivery information up front. Let's check and see if they're in the delivery area and then you'd get into personal information and then uh, payment information from there. So um, that's really helped break up the process. Um, again you can register either way whether you're shopping or going directly to registration. We've kind of got a, a built-in producers page or suppliers page now that you can make use of where if you want to um, list out the different suppliers or farms that deal with and have kind of a quick bio, a quick um, picture and then click into it and see all of their particular products, you're able to do that um, kind of out of the box now. Um, gift cards, um, pretty much every, every piece of the system has been touched. So gift cards are more beautiful, um, easier to fill out, easier to purchase. Um, as we just kind of browse around the, the store and shop, you'll see that we've got a much different layout now than we previously had. Um, very much visual. Um, you've got the options for every week, this week, next week, depending on how the product's set up, right off the bat. Um, so you can see all your different recurring options and one-time options. We've also got detail pages of all these built in. So for example, when you click into a particular product, you're going to see the detail view of not only the bigger image, um, but maybe the description, um, the, the supplier information if you've provided that. We've built in a tool where you can add as many tabs here on the product detail page as you want. 
So if you want to list out a recipe or storage tips, things like that, you can add other, other uh, tabs to the product detail page. Um, you'll see that we've also got different layouts of the store. Um, some, some shop layouts are going to make use of top navigation. Some will make use of left navigation. Some will make use of category images instead of just category text. So it's, it's very modular in how the front end's been set up. The customers also have some different views that they can set up. So you'll see I could go into list view here, and that would list out the products instead of grid view. You can go back to grid view. You can sort by default, which is the way admins have sorted the products in the back end. Or you could do title or price. You can choose how many to show per page. Um, all the, the product display is paginated now. You'll see uh, subcategories and how those are set up and sub-subcategories. So a lot of different things have changed here on the front end. Um, as we, uh, we, we go in here and we start bouncing around, keep in mind I'm, I'm not a logged in customer. I haven't entered an address yet. So I'm, I'm kind of an anonymous user. So if I was just kind of bouncing around through your different product offerings and I said, gosh, I like this large mixed products box. When I click add to delivery, you'll see it says, hey, um, you've got to verify your delivery address. And if I click that, it would just bounce me back to the top. You'll see it puts my cursor in the focus for please enter your delivery address. So that's kind of the first step you have to complete is you've got to make sure you're in the delivery area. And that's something we want to make clear to customers kind of up front so that they don't waste time setting up a, a profile and all that other stuff before they find out that they're not in the delivery area. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in um, some type of address and, and we'll see if it's in the delivery area. So how about this one? You'll see it came up with matches. Um, it's, it's looking to Google and saying, hey, does this address exist? And coming up with a match that you have to select. Once you select it, you get instant feedback as far as am I in the delivery area, am I not in the delivery area, et cetera. And those variables are customizable. So we found out that I'm in the delivery area. That's great. Now I can actually start shopping. So um, you know, we could obviously bounce through any of the different categories we've got. Um, add any of these items. Ground beef, um, that's set up as a pre-order, so it's got special rules. So if we add to order on that, it'll tell you that in the overlay now. So any product that has some type of special rule, it's only available on certain dates, or it's a pre-order, or you have to order it in certain increments, anything like that happens in the overlay, um, lets the customer know what's going on. So I'm going to choose uh, you know, this, this head cheese um, it looks like I'm past the cutoff time for this week, so I can't select this week. That's, that's disabled. When I click Add to Delivery, you'll see it just says 1, Added to Delivery, right over the product image. Pretty slick, a nice visual. Um, so as you bounce through here, I could start adding delivery on, on several of these, and, and you can always see visually what's been added to your order. You'll see we've now got a cart icon, a full cart system. Um, so if I click this cart up here, bounces out and shows me, hey, here what's, here's what's in your particular cart. I'm dealing with next week's delivery because I'm past this week's delivery. So that's what's indicated up here um, at the top. Obviously, we can remove items. We can change quantities and whatnot. Um, or we could, we could check out. So um, you know, you're able to add both one-time items still as well as recurring items. The, um, the other checkbox here, if I checkbox that, that allows us to do some other stuff as far as add it as a one-time to any of my upcoming deliveries, um, just like you can now, but kind of a slightly different interface. If I choose something that's recurring, like weekly, and then add to delivery, it's still going to ask me when I want to start that delivery. So I want to start at the week of November 11th or, you know, or uh, the 9th, etc. So um, any of that stuff that I add, let's say I add this as a recurring weekly, you'll see once we go to our cart, that's, that's indicated in an other items you added section. So you've got your next week's delivery that you're seeing, as well as other items you added at maybe a weekly frequency or to an order in the future. So at any time, we could check out, deliver my stuff. I, I want to show you guys um, kind of that methodology and how it works. When I click deliver my stuff, it knows that I've already entered this address up here. Um, that's kind of retained throughout the system. And we could change that address in any, any time if, if, I, if I messed it up and needed to choose a different one. You'll see it's kind of a typical shopping cart where I can uh, remove items, I can change quantities, continue shopping, clear the delivery, uh, that type of stuff. We've added in some other things like delivery summary, um, your next delivery date, where it's being delivered to, 
uh, your cutoff time. Keep in mind, we haven't created the order yet. Um, nothing's happened yet in the back end. So we don't do that now until we fully check out. And then it shows us the other items that we added, that those carrots that I had on a, a weekly basis. So if I check out at this point, now it's going to take us to, hey, you've got to create an account um, to set up delivery. So it knows we've already entered our address up here, so it's going to skip that step. That was step one. It's now completed. Now all we have to do is enter in the rest of our, our details. So I'm going to pop in um, all of our uh, details. I'll, I'll put in Judd 2 because I think I've probably got a, an existing account in here. See, it formats the phone number for you and all that fancy stuff. We hit continue. Offers us the chance to put in a, a different billing address than delivery address. Otherwise, uh, or I'm sorry, a different delivery address than billing address. Otherwise, we can use the same address. And then payment method. Um, right now, credit card is, is the only thing that's available. Um, we're not hooked into a credit card uh, function right now for the demo site. But typically, that's going to pop up and allow you to enter your credit card details, very similar to what we do now. Um, Authorize.net, Stripe, etc. You enter your details. Once you finish, you actually get a receipt page now. Um, and I'll be putting out a, a video later once we've got this hooked into an actual merchant account. But the receipt page shows you, um, you know, different variables like your, your name, what you ordered, your delivery date, the cutoff time, all those different things. And then it also embeds the thanks for registering page in there. Um, so any verbiage you guys want to have included as far as instructions, marketing, education, all of that can be embedded directly in the receipt page. Um, so the customer gets a receipt right after they, they check out. So they could continue shopping at that point, go kind of back through the, the checkout process if they wanted to. Otherwise, they close the browser, they're good to go. Each time they come back, they're going to go through that same methodology. Um, if they log in, obviously they don't have to enter any of their address information or their personal information. They'll just check out. It'll give them the receipt page and, and the orders created. Um, but in that way, uh, we've really allowed the, the customers kind of bounce around, create an order, look at the order, um, make some decisions before they kind of finalize it. Um, so that's all really exciting stuff. I think it's going to increase average order totals, make it easier for customers to register, understand what's going on, really let you guys focus on sending people to the site and, and getting them signed up. Lots of other ancillary things that have been added as far as you, you see how you know the image blows up when you mouse over it. Um, you'll see that there's also a section on the detail page here of customers also added these items. Those are your cross sells. If you don't have cross sells set up, we automatically show the top sellers for that particular category that this item is in. Um, so as much as we can, we're pushing dynamic data um, to the customer. So we're doing more marketing dynamically and automatically for you. Um, and I think that you know as the, the weeks go by here, um, as, as you guys are upgrading or, or coming on board, you're going to see that there are, there are a lot of other tweaks and bells and whistles that we're going to be adding in here, um, whether that's customer reviews or the ability to have uh, friend referral programs that are more in depth where each customer has a specific account they can look at. Um, we're going to be adding all sorts of different things and having everybody on the same kind of front-end platform is going to allow us to roll all of that out to the entire customer base so everybody benefits um, kind of all at once. So super excited to get you guys um, on board. Hope you like what you see. Um, as we add other things in the admin backends, there is a change log and you'll see that um, that's, that's being updated, and so you'll see some of the things that, that get added. Um, but most of them are going to be centered around how do we make it easier for customers, how do we make it um, more marketable, how do we make it easier to sign up, et cetera. So super excited you guys have, have decided to come on board, and uh, let us know your feedback as you get there. So wanted to also show you guys what it looks like when you're logged in as an existing customer. Um, just so you can kind of see how that's changed too. We've got quite a few few different things in our, our cart. If I go to my account here, you'll see we've got personal info, payment settings, vacations, upcoming orders, recurring orders, order history, preferences. So if I go into personal info, for example, you'll see that this just gives us the opportunity to update 
any of our personal info, first name, last name, email address, our upcoming deliveries. It's going to show us a, a quick list of anything that we have upcoming. So my next week delivery, um, Saturday, October 29th, um, is my cutoff time. Uh, shows us what's coming. And then a delivery summary, etc. cetera. Um, other items you've added may be recurring weekly items, um, items in the future, etc. So it gives you a great breakdown of any of that type of information with your upcoming deliveries as far as your personal info as well. You can get into your payment info, um, easily update your delivery address, your billing address, your credit card details, um, vacation stops, very similar to what we had before where you're going to be using um, pop-up calendars to set your, your leave and return date, uh, recurring items. Again, shows any item that you have on a recurring weekly or other you know, bi-weekly or once per month basis. Delivery history, just a, a history of all the different orders you've got. Shows what's paid, shows what's past due, um, all those types of things. Preferences, gets down to newsletter subscriptions like the general news list. Um, notification preferences as far as when you get those delivery reminder emails. If you use likes and dislikes, um, which, which of those are set up. So we've broken the account area into several different groups that allows you to update you know, very specific information. Um, just kind of breaks it down. So I wanted you guys to kind of see what that looked like. Um, beyond that, the experience is the exact same The a customer that's <coughs> not logged in. So they can add to cart, they can check out. Um, all those different types of things um, are available. They just don't have to fill out the steps where they've got their address and their personal information, etc. So that's, that's kind of what it looks like as a, a logged in customer. We've broken out the account area. Um, they still have the checkout functions and all the typical things that you would have uh, as a not logged in customer. Um, and again, that, that way uh, they can browse around, assemble some things, look at the order totals, see how much they're spending, uh, make some decisions before they actually commit to I'm placing this order. Actually appearing in the back end admin here. So now we're logged into where you and your staff would, would kind of be in the day-to-day -day operations, whether that's customers calling and they want you to edit their order on the phone, or it's a, you know, an, a product edit that you need to make, or you're updating inventory, or it's pack time, so you're printing your packing materials or your routing materials or you're organizing your stops. There's literally hundreds of functions you can do back here. And I won't touch on everything, but just kind of wanted to give you a, you know, a general overview of, of things you can be doing. So obviously when you first log in here, you're getting a dashboard view of the health of your company. Um, what's been happening recently? You've got your outstanding graph up here. You can mouse over and, and get details for what was outstanding in March, uh, April, May, etc. You've got your total weekly recurring up here. So this is how much product I've got uh, set up as weekly recurring for customers right now. You can get into deeper reports and find out your every other week totals and your once per month totals and, and your total recurring. But it's just kind of a nice uh, graph that gives you an idea of, you know, are my weekly recurring orders going up or down? Year-to-date sales, same type of sparkle graph up here. And then you've got some bigger panels that highlight, you know, this month's sales versus last month's sales or this week's sales versus last week's uh, total customers uh, and then order counts. Then you've got some uh, dynamic graphs that you can really play with here, <clears throat> whether that's sales statistics or recurring sales statistics or deposit charges here. Um, if you guys have deposits, whether you know, it could be milk bottle deposits or cooler deposits or bag deposits, anything you return back from the customer, delivery charges. So for example here, um, I'm looking at this week versus last week, but if I change this to this month versus last month, you'll see that graph dynamically changes. We can actually mouse over different points and see that in August uh, uh, we had 56, 25, 74 in orders, and that, that included 24 orders. So we easily uh, get a visual of last month was, was uh, higher than this month. And we can drill that all the way into you know, this year versus last year. You can see that we're way above where we were last year. So that's a great thing. Um, same thing with recurring sales. You know, again, I, I mentioned you could do every other week. Um, you can see we've got 876 in every other week sales. And those are the days that they happen to be on. And again, we can mouse over those and get more data. Or I could say, what are all of my recurring sales. Well, right now it's 11 7 a month, basically. Um, and that includes every week items, every other week, once per month. Same type of thing with deposit charges and delivery charges, if, if you guys uh, uh, charge those fees. 
you can drill into that type of data. Same things for uh, customers. You know, if you want to look at this month versus last month or this year versus last year, you can actually drill into retention and cancellation. So how many customers have we had signing up uh, versus canceling for different date ranges. You can also get into top performing. So top performing orders, top performing customers, top performing products, top performing routes. A lot of different uh, data that we give right off the, the bat on the dashboard here so that you don't necessarily have to drill into some of the deeper reports. You can really make some intelligent business decisions right here off the dashboard. So um, you can also do things with these graphs as far as you know refresh, collapse, and full screen some of these panels so that uh, you're drilling into the data you want to look at. And we've also got information on average order totals. And that's important information, obviously, to be watching for your company. Are those going up or down with different promotions you've got going on? So this year versus last year, you can see we're, we're about the same, a little bit higher. The year isn't over yet. If we do this week versus last week, you'll see that's pretty darn similar. But uh, really helps you visualize that data so that you can help make decisions in the marketing department, um, you know, packing, all those types of things. Billing information, you've got a whole billing panel here where we can see what we've done this week, last week, this month, etc. Um, of different types. Same thing with declines. Adjustments and credits, maybe your staff has issued. What are those looking like for a certain date range? And you can actually do a custom date range with any of these. So if I wanted to plug in um, you know, 81 through 831, we could do that and uh, actually report directly on you know, your specific date range. We've got promotions panels here where you can track first time order specials you've got going on, global discounts, cross sells, first time order specials, coupon codes, all sorts of things that, that allow you to track the, the promotions that you might have going on. And then uh, just a products panel where you can watch specific products if you want to. So let's say you've added a new product and you want to start watching that and be alerted uh, you know, when, when the sales start hitting, what your profit is, etc. You could also see what's your lowest on inventory right off the dashboard here on, what's your highest on inventory, so what's costing you the most on the shelves, um, and again, what, what you've got on feature, what you've got on cross-sell, what you've got on first-time order specials, what's on sale. So lots of different things you can do directly from the dashboard here, and that's what it's designed for is everything's kind of here uh, to make business decisions. But you could also dive much deeper into any of these menu items on the left, whether it's you know, sales report or financial reports or uh, forecast reports or inventory reports, etc. You can dive deeper into the data there. Some of the other uh, cool functions, <clears throat> you know, you're still going to have customers calling you on the phone. They want you to edit their order. Um, maybe you just need to look up their account because you're going to issue them a credit for cracked eggs. All sorts of reasons to be able to look up customers. You can actually just go up to the quick search up here. And if I start typing in John, it's going to come up with all the Johns in the system. And I'll pop into Naomi Johnson here. And instantly from her profile screen, we've got a lot of information just like the dashboard we just, just looked at. So each customer has their own profile dashboard in the back end here as far as total sales. And we could play with those same uh, types of date ranges and really drill into what's this customer meant to us over, over time. Um, you can see their next delivery date, their cutoff date, their last login, their status. This customer is disabled right now. We could view their location um, on the map and, and kind of figure out where they're at on, on the route. You could update any of their personal profile information. You can easily update any order, whether that's their current order or upcoming orders or their recurring items. Any of that stuff can be edited and added to directly from the profile. Um, we also show all the top products that this customer has ordered. And you've got quick links where you can easily add this to this week's order, add it to next week's order. We could also go directly into their order history and see um, you know, what, what type of order totals they've had. We've got a whole notes system. So you've got notes you can enter for these customers, whether they're kind of static, always there notes, or detailed customer notes where it's tracking who entered that note and what day and time. Uh, you've got driver notes. You can see all the vacations they've ever set up. You could add a vacation if you needed to, um, look through the log and see who set their vacations. And of course, we could modify this customer's route. So again, a ton of things that you can do directly from this screen. Um, you can also get into their entire billing history and enter in check or cash payments or adjustments or credits. So anything to do with a customer's balance, you could do directly from the billing screen. 
Um, you can also uh, you know, dive deeper in and do a, a much deeper search for customers. You can obviously create a brand new customer profile. You can control what fields show up in profiles. Um, you can actually segregate your customer base and have different groups of customers that you charge different pricing to or show them a different set of products or category structure. Um, for example, if we go to create customer profile here, if you've got somebody on the phone and, and they just like to know if they're in the delivery area, you can easily type in um, their first name, last name, address. You'll see it starts coming up with matches here. So it, uh, it knows where we're at. We're tied into the USPS system. We could look them up and see that they're outside of the defined delivery area, or if they were in the delivery area, what route they'd be assigned to, when their delivery day was, the cutoff time, and uh, any other useful information while you've got them on the phone. So a lot of quick quick tools like that that allow you to you know, look up a customer or make a quick edit without leaving uh, uh, the screen you're on. You can also dive deep, deeper into you know, managing products, whether that's inventory levels or product images or categories that they're housed in. Um, all sorts of options as far as you know, updating products, whether it's inventory, price, price per pound, retail price, list price. Um, we could click into a particular product and start updating details about that product, whether it's the image or the SKU, um, maybe the short description. And I won't bore you guys with all the different options, but there are a ton of different things you can do to control the behavior of this product, whether it's a minimum order amount or it's only available on certain weeks, or it's a pre-order item like turkeys for Thanksgiving, uh, maybe it's only available to a certain route. You can actually segregate this for packing purposes, so you could have this be a grocery item or a frozen item or refrigerated, etc. So a lot of different things that you can do to control a product's behavior individually. Out of the box, products can be added as either one-time or recurring, um, but you may end up with special cases where maybe this product has uh, special rules where it can only be added to your next nearest order, or maybe it's got a different cutoff time than the route cutoff. Um, we've also got the capability to do package products, so veggie boxes, for example, or meat package products or fish package products. You can have a, a parent product like a small veggie box and then we've got tools where each week you would say this is what's in the veggie box and maybe allow people to make substitutions. And you could make substitutions either based on quantity rules that you'd set up or value-based substitutions where you assign values to certain products and they can swap like, like products. Um, from there you could get into um, a ton of different routing functions. We like to automatically assign people to routes in our system. So that's what we kind of push you towards is either assigning zip or postal codes to routes or drawing shapes on a map. So for example, you might draw a shape for your North Boulder AM route and anybody whose latitude and longitude falls within that shape on the map would automatically be assigned to that route. Um, or you may have a couple of zip codes and so if my zip code falls within there, I'm assigned to that route. So you can create your route names in here, um, do all sorts of fancy stuff as far as set your, your start and end location. Um, you can suspend routes, you can make them hidden, set your, your delivery day and your cutoff time uh, to what you'd like the cutoff time to be for customers for that particular route. Once you've got your routes established and customers are on those routes, you can organize your route stops. So this is something that uh, drivers or admins can do. And by default, this is going to show us everybody who's got an order on this particular route for this week. So I may have 162 customers on this route. This week, only 82 have orders. So I'm going to take a completely different path through that route. So this allows me to visualize that route. You can obviously move this map around and zoom in and zoom out. I can click pins and see who these people are. Um, if they've got any driver notes, it would show those to me as well. And uh, we can actually drag and drop people in this list over here, this customer list on the left. Or I could say suggest the best route, and that would suggest the best route based on drive time. So right now it's 305 minutes, so we get that as low as possible. We could do by distance, so shortest, farthest from where your trucks leave from. Um, a lot of different options, and you can do a combo of all those. We could also move customers from this particular screen. So if I want to move these three customers to a different route, I can do that. One of the other nice things about the Organized Route Stop screen is you can visualize several different routes on this map at once. So for example, I could say, well, let's see the, the Tuesday downtown uh, route on top of this. 
And now we've got uh, green pins on top of our blue that show us both of these routes at once. And so it really makes it handy to visualize these, move people around, um, split routes up, those types of things. So the organization that you put to this particular screen, that's going to dribble into your, your print route sheets screen. Um, that would dribble into turn by turn directions. This would go into GPS if you import or export GPS files. This also affects your packing materials. Your packing materials will print in route order. You could print invoices in route order. So there are a ton of things that you can do in the system in route order. So just to give you an example, if I go to print route sheets here, I could choose that particular route. And say, gosh, I'd like to show that on screen. We could also download it as a PDF or export it to Excel. And this gives us our manifest of exactly what we're dropping off and where. So for example, I could Use stop zero here as my load sheet, and this is everything that needs to be loaded on the truck in total to complete the whole route. I can also just go stop by stop and see uh, you know, what Steven needs this week and, and what Netta's needs this week, etc. So you can go down kind of through the, the entire list and either pack off of this sheet, or you could pack off of bag labels or invoices, etc. So we've got several different mechanisms for you to pack off of. You'll see there's a print bag labels button right here. Um, so some people will pack with those, some people will pack off of the route sheet. Um, if you're using our driver software, you could actually pack off of that and deliver off of that. So kind of up to you guys um, how you want to do it. But you'll see this shows us the entire manifest of people that have orders this week, any driver notes that may happen to be in there, and uh, we could print that and be on our way. You've also got turn-by-turn -turn directions that, that uh, generate with that if you'd like to print those. And uh, you've got a map that you can view. Uh, that you could print as well. So a lot of different ways to get your drivers out there on the road. Uh, we've also got, as I mentioned, GPS import and exports. If you use GPS units, our driver software will actually give you directions um, and walk you through the route if you'd like to. Um, kind of moving down from there, you, you can get into billing. So for example, electronic billing, we're going to tie in with whatever merchant account and gateway you guys use. Um, it's got to be a PCI compliant gateway. And you're going to do your billing directly through our back end. So we don't actually house the credit card info. Your gateway does. We just talk to them silently in the background via a token. So you could come in here and say, I want to bill this particular customer, or I want to bill an entire route, or I want to bill the entire customer base up to a specific date. So I want to bill everybody for their deliveries through today. Um, if I click search down here, it gives us a list of everybody who matches that criteria, shows us what they owe, and if I clicked Bill Selected at the bottom, it would now bill 68 customers, a total amount of, of 16 grand. And that would give us feedback here on the right as far as who processed, who declined, what that batch total was. It'll send out the receipts and decline notices, update account balances. So there's literally nothing else to do. You're set to go. You can look through the declines and kind of decide if you'd like to, like to still deliver to those people. So it's up to you when you do billing. Some companies will do it once a week on Fridays for the entire customer base. Other companies will do it before they deliver, so maybe after the cutoff time. Other companies return deposits while they're on the route, and so they want to return those so they can credit the customer's accounts. So they'll actually bill after delivery. And you could, you could bill uh, 10 times a day if you'd like to. It's, it's only going to pick up people that still owe you money. So a really easy billing interface. Um, you can also get into you know, mass updating deposit returns through the back end here if you're not using the driver software, mass updating payments, maybe issuing a mass credit or adjustment, all sorts of kind of financial tools in there. We touched a bit on reports, um, sales reporting here. You've got things like overall sales, cross selling, um, you know, how much bacon have I sold by relating it to eggs. If I bounce into overall sales here, for example, You'll see uh, you've got a ton of different criteria, you know, date ranges, product categories, membership levels, routes, products, etc. Any of these, um, you know, we, we could kind of drill our search down by, by certain criteria. But you could also just click search for a specific date range and see what your total sales were for that date range and how many sales are included. Um, all of our reports are exportable, printable. Most of the time you can sort by column headers. Um, easy to work with. You've also got financial reporting, uh, credit and adjustment reports, financial exports, past due customer reports, payments posted, what all payments have we collected for certain date ranges, what's our profits, um, what all taxes have we collected. 
You've got product reporting options like inventory, um, substitutions, dislikes, forecast. Um, forecast, for example, if I click that, based on this week, this is what we need to have on hand. Um, so it'll populate exactly what you put in for the date range and tell you based on you know, the orders that exist, this is what you need. You could also create a purchase order based off of this. So choose a supplier and say, what do I need for a certain date range? It'll populate it, allow you to generate a PDF, shoot that off to the supplier. And you can actually check in the inventory from that purchase order once uh, you receive it back. And then uh, from there, you could get into customer reporting, uh, friend referral reports. We've got a whole friend referral system built in, new customer reports, no order customer reports. Um, you could reach out and, and communicate with everybody who hasn't placed an order, maybe the last 90 days. Include a coupon code and invite them back to service. Um, retention reports, how many people are we gaining versus losing. On hold, who, you know, how many people are on hold right now and what's that mean to us money-wise. Um, I mentioned earlier a ton of different marketing tools, so global discounts, coupons, featured products, sale items, cross-selling, uh, friend referrals, first-time order specials. A lot of that can be automatically shown on your front end. For example, a category that just shows everything that's on sale. That's pretty handy. Um, we touched on purchase orders. You've got a whole communication system built in here so where you could send out mass emails to everybody or um, only people on a certain route or everybody who has a T-bone stake in next week's order. So it really allows you to drill in and, and email just specific sets of people. But you've also got automated emails. So the whole autoresponder system we talked about where you're going to control emails that go out based on uh, you know, the first order or they receive their first delivery or this is what goes out after they register. There's about 30 different types that you can set up. So we could say, I want to send out one that goes out after the 15th delivery and then another one that goes out after the 30th delivery. You can do after registration and no purchase or after a purchase with no repeat purchase. So the system really does a great job of automatically following up with people for you. Um, you can also dive into things like static pages. So I want to edit my contact us page or our static page, uh, our home page. You've got an editor built in um, so you can get fancy with your formatting. You guys control meta titles and descriptions. Um, lots of different ways to kind of manage your content, but we also help you out with that. You can reach out to our crew anytime and say, hey, I got a new photo for our About Us page. Could we pop that up there? Um, so that's kind of the gist of the system. You get into some configuration stuff from there where you could set up your tax zones and tax rates and delivery charges and deposit charges. Um, but this should give you a good idea of what all the system can do and the flexibility. Um, we support a lot of different models, whether it's dairy or veggie or propane or meal delivery or grocery delivery. Um, anything where, where it's uh, heavily recurring delivery, we're a great fit. So would love the opportunity to kind of talk to you in person or on the phone and uh, kind of check out your specific business model. Make sure that we've got the tools to support what you're trying to do. So definitely reach out uh, via demo at deliverybizpro.com or fill out the form on our schedule a tour page um, and uh, we will schedule a time to kind of hop on the phone and share screens and go over uh, more detail of what you guys might be doing. I appreciate you joining us and uh, thanks for taking the time.